In this video, we're going to learn about surds and brackets. This is going to build upon the ideas covered in the previous video, calculating with surds. If you haven't already watched that video, I recommend you check it out first. I'll put a link in this video's description. We're going to start by looking at examples of questions with single brackets. So for example, this one here. We expand these in exactly the same way we do with algebra, we just need to use the rules for multiplying thirds. Since the square root 2 is outside the bracket, we're going to multiply this by everything that's inside the bracket. So we're going to do square root 2 multiplied by square root 3 first. If we use our third rule for multiplication, root 2 times root 3 is root 6. We then multiply square root 2 by 10. When you multiply an integer by a third, you can just put that integer in front of the third, so this is 10 lots of root 2, or 10 root 2. Let's try another one. So this time we're going to multiply the square root 5 by the two terms inside the bracket. So square root 5 times 7 first of all. That's a third multiplied by an integer, so we just put that 7 in front of the root 5, so it's 7 root 5. And then we need to do root 5 times negative root 8. Using our third rules, root 5 times root 8 is root 40, so this is negative root 40. Now the second example is a little bit different because the square root 40 can be simplified. So if we keep the 7 root 5, and then rewrite the square root 40 as root 4 times root 10. The square root of 4 is just 2, so we have 7 root 5, subtract 2 root 10. Now let's have a look at some examples with double brackets. So this one here. Once again we use the same rules as we do if these were algebraic terms, but we're just going to use the third rules for multiplication. So we're going to multiply everything that's in the first bracket by everything that's in the second bracket. This means we need to do four multiplications in total. So we're going to start by multiplying the first two terms in each of the brackets, so root 3 times root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9, which is just 3. Then we multiply the square root 3 from the first bracket by the positive 5 in the second bracket. This gives us positive 5 root 3. Then we multiply the 4 in the first bracket by the root 3. That's 4 root 3. And then finally the 4 multiplied by the 5 which is 20. Now we can simplify this one a little bit as well. We've got 3 plus 20, which will give you 23. And then we can also simplify the two thirds. Since they have the same number inside the square root, we can add them together. 5 root 3 plus 4 root 3 is 9 root 3. Let's try a second example. So this time we start with square root 7 times square root 7, which is just 7. Then root 7 times negative 2, which is negative 2 root 7. 2 times root 7, which is a positive 2 root 7, and then positive 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. In this one we can simplify as well. If we do 7 take away 4, we end up with 3. And then when we simplify the thirds, we have negative 2 root 7 plus 2 root 7. And these two terms will actually cancel out, since negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So the answer to this one is actually just the number 3. Let's have a look at an even trickier example of double brackets. So for this one we'll start with the square root 2 times the 7, that's ok, that's 7 root 2. Then square root 2 times negative root 10. If you multiply root 2 and root 10, you multiply the 2 and the 10 so you get root 20, so this is negative root 20. Then we need to do square root 5 times 7, that's 7 root 5. And finally square root 5 times negative square root 10, which is negative square root 50. Now at this point it may look as though there's no simplifying to do, because all of the thirds have different numbers inside the square roots. We've got a 2, a 20, a 5 and a 50. However we can simplify some of these thirds down further. The 7 root 2 can't be simplified, so let's write that as 7 root 2, but the square root 20 can. Square root 20 is equal to square root 4 times square root 5. Square root 4 is just 2, so this is the same as 2 root 5. So let's replace the square root 20 with 2 root 5. 7 root 5 can't be simplified anymore, so let's write 7 root 5, but the square root 50 can. We can rewrite square root 50 as square root 25 times square root 2, and square root 25 is 5, so it's 5 times root 2, or 5 root 2. So let's replace the square root 50 with 5 root 2. Now that we've simplified those thirds, you can see there is further simplification to do. If we look at the 7 root 2 and subtract 5 root 2, that would simplify to give you 2 root 2. Then we can also simplify these root 5s, we've got negative 2 root 5 plus 7 root 5, which gives you 5 root 5. 
So the final answer to this one is 2 root 2 plus 5 root 5. Now sometimes you'll have a double bracket question that doesn't immediately look like a double bracket. For example this one here. The square root of 3 plus 1 all squared. A really common wrong answer that I see for this question is people square both of the terms inside the bracket. So they square square root of 3, which is 3, and then they square 1, which is 1, and then just do 3 plus 1 to get 4. But that's incorrect. When we square a bracket, we're timesing that bracket by itself. So we need to multiply the bracket by itself. So it's actually a double bracket, and we know how to expand this. We do square root 3 times square root 3, that's 3. Square root 3 times 1, that's square root 3. 1 times square root 3, that's also square root 3. And then 1 times 1, which is 1. You can see this is the same as what we got when we did the incorrect example, but we've also got this square root 3 and another square root 3. We can simplify this one. We've got 3 plus 1, which is going to give you 4. And then we've also got square root 3 plus square root 3, which is 2 root 3. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And now go and try the exam questions I've linked in the video's description.